Good day, good day. I had a little crocodile dundee at the end there. So last night, I wanted to make this, I had this fire ass video. And when I say fire, I mean like I was really heated about the subject matter and I was about to flame shit. And um, I guess I flamed it so much that my phone was like, man, fuck that and stop recording. So that sucked. I was like probably about a minute, maybe two minutes in and uh, that shit would have been fire. Um, I might release a voice note that I was do I was sending and then just put it to some video or something like that. I don't know. But um, I don't want to talk about the relationship or genitalia speak as I like to call it. I do want to talk about business. I haven't done a business video in a long time, but I, you know, I when I do this type of stuff, it's just because I'm inspired, right? Oh, that looks cool as hell. Um, I'm inspired to do so. Um, so in this case, I was talking to my uh, my business former business partner and forever brother, uh, Jay Boss, and um, we was just talking about like running a business versus like what I'm doing now and how I'm making more in a shorter period of time and things like that, right? And how I'm able to do so. And like, we, you know, we, we talked about it, you know, having multiple revenue streams and also maintaining all these different revenue streams and the ability to, um, cause I've never had like one source of income or not, I, I haven't had one source of income for a long ass time, like a very long time. And it feels weird when I do. And it's just like, oh my God, this is crazy. Um, I also have also always had, uh, or more recently I've had assets. So that's been really good that I can leverage those assets and do one or two things with them, uh, borrow against them and stuff like that. But we're talking about business and we're talking about, you know, um, how in business or how we used to, he and I used to run business, um, and how I run business now in terms of, you know, what I think is worth it, worthwhile, and what I just don't want to mess with anymore, you know, like I just don't need to do that type stuff. Um, by the way, I'm in Valdosta, Georgia. I have to drive like an hour and almost 20 minutes to get to the closest freaking Best Buy, man. Country living at its finest. It's like two hours if I wanted to go to the Apple store. Um, so this was even closer and a little bit cheaper because I was going to buy the damn macbook pro 16 16 inch with the m1 max processor or something like that but i got a lower one because that's what they had and i don't also i don't feel like waiting because i want to do some configurations to that networking gear that i've been showing on the community section and i kind of want to get that started and um hopefully probably by next weekend um actually put all that stuff up and or make it live um so yeah that's kind of like what i'm looking at that's what i'm looking to do Anyway, so getting into the subject matter, um, when to hang it up. So like often in business, right? You do business and then you do business. I'm trying to like do it too damn much. So you do business and then when you do your business, um, at some point you like you keep going the way you're doing or the way you're doing it. And then at another point, you start to like make changes so that business can grow and scale and get it to where you want to in terms of making money. Any which way, it's gonna require a lot of hard work by you, whether to set it up um, to a certain point or to maintain your current work habits. Like for instance, doing, um, I, you know, I did my computer consulting business and I had my hair salon and it's like the hair salon, um, it was done improperly in my eyes or in like hindsight, you know, in, in hindsight. So I understand kind of how to do it a little bit better moving forward if I ever wanted to. And I, I would do it differently. I would grow into a larger space. And you know, thinking about stuff like that, like how could you actually maximize on the money that you're getting to where you are profitable? Um, we were not profitable and that was a huge issue of course, right? And that led us to close down, you know, like just honest, it was a very big failure and draw a disappointment on my part um, or for me. And um, I felt some type of way about it and I, I still do sometimes. I finally settled one of those debts just the other day. But it's like, okay, can that business scale? Like, you know, my business partner's doing it and it's like, you know, you can add more spaces, but you really should grow into larger spaces and grow your, um, your what's it called, your tenant base. Instead of 
um, getting a large space and then trying to fit more tenants in and get, trying to fill that space because you're going to have to deal with the lag, right? You know, the time between when you get the large space and the time between when you fill that larger space. So that's a big issue. And that could actually be, you know, detrimental or really uh, detrimental or in our case, of course, um, uh, the death nail uh, in, in terms of like just putting that nail in the coffin, like you're fucked, you're screwed because you um, quote unquote did it wrong or you couldn't handle that lag, right? And that lag required us to have more money. And we did not. <laughs> so there was that, right? And um, I even talked to my third business partner, uh, oh, Renaud, and I, and that uh, Jermaine wasn't in on that, or, or J Boss wasn't in on that. Um, but yeah, and um, in fact, I need to talk to another business partner. But moving on. Um. So in in terms of the computer consulting business and some of the stuff that I did with uh, with J Boss, the work that we did or the way that we did it, one of our other business partners, um, Baltimore, as he's no normally known as, uh, but Baltimore was just like, yo, we need to do this, we need to do these type of contracts. He had the ideas, and I was a blocker to that. You know, um, I, I didn't wanna move forward with it, and I was doing a lot of, not that I didn't wanna move forward with it, it took me too long to get to that point, is what happened. And I said, you know, I, I tried to remove myself as a blocker, but sometimes you don't really see that you're a blocker until it's quote unquote too late or you're too set in your ways or, you know, certain things happen and you lose interest. Um, what happened is with the salon, that took so much of my money and so much of, um, you know, my, my focus that um, it caused an issue with the other business. So that was another thing, running two businesses or multiple businesses at one time um, and thinking that I can get quote unquote a good or better result out of that and I could not like I just could not like so that was like a big problem on my part um I was stretching myself too thin and I had to quote unquote I, I had not I keep on saying quote unquote but I had to admit that you know um I had to admit that had to accept that you know had to take that take that take that and I had to deal with that and deal with the fallout you know it caused a failure because another thing was I was the um, the person that went on these different job sites and tried to put everything in place and did all the work, right? And I wouldn't say like do all the work, but and you know my business partners did support me. Um, but at the same time, it was like okay, Mike, you gonna do it? You know, I, I'm I'm gonna put myself or I'm gonna get myself straight or get myself in. I'll put my foot in the door, and then after that, y'all follow through with me. And um, because of the way we structured the business, because of the way we handled a lot of stuff, because of me being a blocker, me being um, deficient and uh, inability to like, you know, stretch myself or I stretched myself too thin, um, I was really the, um, I guess you would say the linchpin. I was the, you know, that single block, you know, I was, uh, I, 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 my back was broken in a sense. And then my spirit got broken. So, Sorry, you know, I was kind of going down memory lane with that one. Um, there's there's feelings involved when you like deal with business and you really get into it, and it's something that you've uh, you know watch grow, and then you see it also pass away. You know, that's um, that's a really rough feeling or a really rough thing to deal with uh, over time. I mean, you get over it, but at the same time, it does take a while. It does hurt. So, anyways, moving on. So, uh, one of the things that we did or that I did, uh, or that uh, Jermaine, uh, Jermaine and I, or J-Boss and I were talking about, is that he's going through it right now where he's saying like, hey, listen, man, he, there's certain things he just doesn't want to do anymore. Uh, reaching that certain age also, or reaching that point mentally where you're like, man, it's time to hang it up, right? You know, in nine minutes in, we'll get to the point of the video, but all that stuff sets the table for a greater meal. But, um... You know, uh, knowing when to hang your hat up. And before you get to that point, knowing when to quote unquote get out, pivot, or fork, right? So let's go through all three of those. Get out, meaning you're gonna get out because this is not going to work. It's not gonna work the way you see it. And you could see it not working the way you want it to. And you've done, maybe you have a couple tests or a couple moments or a couple quote unquote signs. Uh, so to speak, like, hey, God, give me a sign. All right, boom, this is it, Dane, all right? And making sure that you actually listen to those signs and pay attention to them, right? That's that's one thing. And then um, uh, pivot, right? So with pivot, um, 
I guess pivot and fork are there. Yeah, okay, pivot, uh, I'll, I'll split them, I'll split them up. So, um, I'll try and split them up, we'll see. But they'll probably be the same thing. Uh, pivot and fork might be the same thing. But pivot is like making those slight moves, is how I think of pivot. Excuse me, making those slight moves on being agile so you can change the little pieces of your business, maybe not the whole thing, and maybe not everything at once, but you change one or two little things so that you can actually put yourself in the right position um, to, you know, put yourself in the right position to actually make, uh, you know, make more money, make, uh, you know, uh, sa uh, what's it called? Sacrifices that mean something, you know, make meaningful moves. And then fork. So fork would be like, okay, the business went this way. If you're looking like, you know, at a branch, you know, or something like that, an if statement, if this, then do this. Or if this condition and this condition, condition or this condition, then do this, so on and so forth, right? So you fork, you say, hey, listen, man, if I keep going this, this route, I'm leading to failure or it's gonna get to a condition where I error out or I fail, right? And then if I take it this route, which is a completely different route, this is not just a regular pivot. This is like you going to all your customers, right? And instead of slowly saying, hey, I'm gonna put you on contracts, you go to all of them and say, hey, listen, we're changing our business model and we're gonna slowly, uh, we're, we're gonna put, not slowly, we're gonna put everybody on a contract. If you wanna be on, if you don't wanna be on a contract, we totally understand, but in terms of our business and our growth and to ensure that our business maintains um, or uh, maintains or increases its longevity, um, we have to make sure, because we don't wanna maintain, we wanna increase, right? So um, we have to make sure that we uh, make the changes necessary to go to a model that is going to behoove us, right? Like you can say all types of words just to say, hey, listen, we're doing this for the betterment of us and our service and to make sure that we are around for you. Otherwise, we're all gonna have to get jobs, which is what happened. We did not fork. We tried to pivot and do little small things, but we did not do the necessary things to actually make us stay or make us give us that staying power so we can actually stay around, you know, as a cohesive group. So we forked. And uh, forking could mean like, and this is why I kind of wanted them to be a little bit different, is because forking could be something like, okay, hey, um, in this case, uh, J Boss says, hey, I'm gonna still keep on doing the business or we give the business to somebody else that wants to keep on doing the same model that we were doing before and they're not gonna make any changes. And then we go off and do our own thing or we do a different type of business, maybe we move into software or we just dismantle the business or disband, I should say, is what really happened, All right? So disband, that's like what we chose or that's that's what happened, you know? Um, and I can't, I won't say that's like the right choice. Um, I wish, I, I wish it was different I wish we could make, you know, more money um, together because I believed in the partnership. I believed in the team that um, I like to say I built um, because, you know, but we all came, like Jermaine and I came together and we talked about it and we put it all together. But he was just like, yo, boss, I'm not going to lie, man. I was already thinking the same thing. So I can't really say I built it, but I'm, I'm going to take credit right now. <laughs> but, um, you know, and then uh, with Baltimore, him coming in, and um, working with us as well, and you know, looking at all of our strengths and weaknesses, and say, okay, hey, you do this, you do this, because by them doing those different things, they actually do it a lot faster, or we're able to execute faster. So then, with all that being said, you know, um, a fork would have been something like uh, uh, what I kind of talked about. Get over. A fork uh, could have would have been something like what I talked about, where it's like, okay, hey. You know, you do this and we, you know, we pivot or no, we not make a pivot, we make a major change. And that would actually probably been better. Um, you never know, but you know, um, it, it may have kept us, this, it, it may have kept us in the same spot. It may have kept me in Florida. You know, I like where I am. I love where I am right now. Um, but at the same time, you know, I always think of what if, right? Like, you know, like it's Marvel Cinematic Universe here. But, you know, in, in Universe 161A or some shit like that, you know, uh, uh, a young Grizzly kept his business with his business partners and they were also su very successful. You know, there's that stuff. The point I'm making is before you get to all those different points where you make that all happen or you, you, you make a decision of where these things happen and where these things um, should occur for you in terms of your vision and you thinking ahead, being temporal minded or being a temporal minded being, thinking ahead and thinking five to 
one to three to five years ahead, you know, maybe not too far along, but enough. But, you know, thinking ahead and looking at it and saying, all right, cool, I can actually do this and this will make sense for me, right? Um, or this, I can actually do this, this makes sense for me and my vision and what I want for this company and then my partners are in agreement. Um, they were in agreement with not just about everything I said, they had pushback and stuff, but they trusted me and they understood, hey, listen, man, um, I really want this to happen. It's not like a, a money grab for me or anything else like that. I want this to make, uh, to make it, to make it for all of us. But having that point where you say, you know, hey, listen, I got to hang up my hat. So talk back to the conversation I had with um, my business partner, my brother, um, is he's getting to a point where he's like, man, I just don't want to do this type of stuff anymore. I don't want to do this in this way any, anymore. Even the um, the place where he's at now, he's like, hey, listen, man, it's, it, do, it don't feel the same. It's not the same. And there's a lot of stuff that's on me that, you know, he may not feel that he has help with. And he's just like, you know, the... It, other people have moved on and done different things and um he's just sitting there you know like he wants better he wants to do more so he's doing the work outside of it you know to get to a better place but then also it's like you know it sucks while you're in it you know that type of stuff and that's that's what he's going through um and you know i talked to him about like hey man maybe it's time you know after a certain point when you're running business you know and it just still seems like it's a side hustle that you, you have to make a change to say, <coughs> sorry, you have to make a change to say, hey, listen, man, um, this ain't working. You know, I may be making money, but at some point that money diminishes or your time should be more valuable or, you know, it, it takes a lot more out of you to make that same amount of um, money. And that's kind of what happens, you know, that's what kind of what he's going through, where he's just like, yo, listen, man, I'm not, I'm not getting any younger. I can't run around and be up late working on these people's computer. Um, these people want me to have things formatted for them for the next day and all this other stuff. And I have my other workload. Plus I have my family. I have no help. And that's the big thing, not having help. At some point you really have to, when you're working your business, even if it's a service business, you should have your business to where you are a manager after a certain period of time. You have to have a business or you have to run your business and say, hey, listen, man, I don't touch laptops no more. I don't touch servers no more. I only handle sales. I bring people in and that's it. Test new software, test new uh, deployments, research and development. After a while, you don't even do research and development. You start hiring people to do it. You know, I've been a part of companies that are larger consultancies, smaller consultancies, larger consultancies, and you start to see the difference when they're going after government contracts, state contracts, uh, local municipalities, you know, cities and, you know, uh, towns and whatever, excuse me, um, school boards or something like that. You know, I've been a part of, you know, um, that effort or I've seen it, you know, that other teams are doing or the changes that they're making. And I'm like, wow, you know, what was my business doing? Was my business even close to any of this? And the answer is no, absolutely not. Um, my mind wasn't there. Um, the Not the aptitude, but the the clarity of vision. Also being pig-headed and stubborn and not listening to uh, one of my partners earlier and accepting what he was saying. You know, really getting out of my own way. Um, you know, making sure that uh, I listened to them and they actually had... Uh, you know, they had um, they had a, a say in what was going on. Like, they had a say, but, you know, uh, at the end of the day, one thing is that they, they trusted what I said. And they would trust what I say or what I would say would trump what they say. Not on some, like, ah, I'm bigger and badder and I'm smarter or anything else like that. But they were like, you know what, Mike is usually right. And even when he's wrong, he's usually right that type of shit and that's how I perceived it now I would you know I, sometimes I'd be like yo listen man you know I think we should definitely do it this way I don't care what y'all say we got to do it this way and it would work and then sometimes it would fail um not often and that's not like you know pat myself on the back or anything like that or ego um uh, you know an ego statement uh but you know one thing I noticed is like I even said to uh, Jay Boss, I said, yo, listen, man, you know, uh, sometimes I really do have to get out of my own way or I have to allow you to really be a part of this company or 
built, be a part in the decision they're making in this company. And I would always give him chances to do that. And then, of course, he would also, after a while, or actually, no, he would often take chances to do that and say, yo, boss, man, I think we should do it this way. This doesn't make any sense, so on and so forth. And, you know, sometimes I just had to, you know, listen to him because at the end of the day, I didn't want to lose not only my my um, my good business partner, but my good friend, uh, my brother. And I had to, I had to really, like, you know, step back. And, and it always worked out, you know, because at the end of the day, I said, you know what, man, um, I said, you know, even if it doesn't work the way you, uh, you, you planned it, I'm gonna make it work the way you planned it. And when he, like, you know, he would, and that's how he would always back me up too. So it was reciprocal. So, you know, like, <laughs> I guess we'll talk about genitalia speak, but when we talk about things like, um, you know, relationships and what we all do. Uh, in relationships, being uh, reciprocating or being reciprocal in terms of relationships, and um, saying, "Hey, listen, this is, um, you know, um, we both have a say." Real partnerships. So when I hear women talk partnerships, and then I see them see what they're doing, it's like, no, that's not a partnership. You're not being a partner. Like, hey, I know what it looks like to be in a partnership with somebody, right? Without the sex. You know, like, it's just, yo, two persons coming together, trying to make something really fucking great, you know? Um, and you would change that to say, two people coming together, interlocking to make something beautiful. You know, like, that's really the only change in between, like, business and relationships is because there's more feeling, there's that emotional and physical connection, so on and so forth. But when it comes to, you know, you two talking with other one another and compromising, like... I've, I know what that looks like. So when somebody says this type of stuff or you hear some of these, um, you know, these back and forth, these rhetorics that people will talk, or even if you're just talking to somebody in a business manner, it's like, that doesn't sound like what I know it to be. Like, it that doesn't sound like the partnership and what I expect the partnership to look like and feel like and so on and so forth. So I, I'm calling bullshit on what you're saying, you know? Um, yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> like, that type of shit. It's like, uh, nah, man, like, uh, uh, fuck that noise. You know, that type of shit. So, oh, excuse me. So when I hear some things like that people say, I'm like, nah, that's that's not right. <laughs> Anyways, back to business. Um, you can learn a lot from your business relationships and actually bring them to your personal relationships. I've always, um, not always, but I've, I've mostly said that, hey, and a business re- or a relationship or a marriage is a business and you're in the business of making children and that is your product. Right, and you provide the service that you provide is to make, uh, is to help those children get to the next level and pass certain things on, whether it be your genetic um, legacy and your no, your, gelet, your genetic and um, what's it called? Uh, what's it? Oh man, mental legacy. I don't know how, another word, but that's what I expect to happen when it comes to. Um, building a family or have running a family like a business. Yes, there is love or there's connection between you and the other person and bonding and everything else like that. But at the end of the day, you're coming together and you're saying, hey, listen, man, this is this is what I think should happen. Um, what say ye? Okay, I don't think that's right or I don't think you have any good input. All right, let's move on, right? Like, like let's move forward with it. Or respecting the person enough, and this is where the quote unquote partnership really comes in, respecting the person enough to say, hey, listen, this person does not feel comfortable. Um, and you also have to really let, you know, let them have an input, you know, it's, it's their kids too. Like that's how I was raised. You know, that's the society I was raised in. But then you see this perverted way of doing it, which is just bullshit. But you can learn a lot from business when you're running a business and you genuinely care about the input of your business partners and you generally respect the input of your business partner. I said partners, so that's like, that's that's for those polygamists out there. Or, yeah, polygamists. So, So, you know, like, knowing when to hang it up and knowing when to, like, you know, take input from other people. You know, and at some point in your business, you have to say, this doesn't make sense. It is not going to, it's not going the way I want it to. Um, We're going to have to regroup and we're going to have to make um, either a pivot or we're going to have to fork, meaning that we're going to have to change the way this whole business is ran and then um, do something else with it. Uh, Anything else, you know, like uh, if anything, if we keep on on the same path, we will end, we will fail. And that's exactly what happened. 
So I wanted to talk about that. Um, that's really it. There's really like that's kind of like the story and all the anecdotal, uh, you know, all the tangential conversations that I usually come up with. But I hope that helps uh, brothers in business and helps them, you know, helps you all uh, in terms of, you know, how you should think and one of the ways that you should move. Uh, as you always know, as you guys all know, like most of my videos are mindset based videos talking about what you should do mentally and how you should prepare yourself mentally to make certain changes and moves and um, put yourself in a proper position to actually win. Um, a lot of my content nowadays when it comes to some of the relationship stuff, the red pill stuff, um, uh, the, the manosphere, black manosphere stuff is really post red pill rage content. I've talked about this for a while and this is how I like, I look or view my content and that's the name I want to put to it. It's post going through all of that you know, the, the, the pain and anguish and the, and the feelings and all the other stuff, the, uh, the, uh, the logical fallacies that you have to deal with, um, in yourself and from other people, you know, and you're starting to, you're coming to a point where you're like, this doesn't make sense. This is why I understand this is how I shall move forward. And, um, that's what my content about is mainly about is moving forward. Excuse me. Um, shit's fucked. We know that. All right, cool. Moving on. You know, like that's, that's kind of how I look at my content nowadays because progress is the biggest thing. Um, one of the last things I'll, I'll leave with is, you know, the, the video I was in the fire video I was talking about was a Chantel Simone video where she pretty much is fucking a brutality where she goes off, like God goes off, but she fucking eviscerates this, um, this dude that keeps on saying passport boys and all this other shit, shaming language and shit like that. Sounding like a whole bitch. Um, to me at least, because it was just like a lot of dick policing and you know, you hear the guy and he's talking and it's just like, she starts, you know, she really starts attacking him. And I was like, yo, Jamaican, I was, I was like, you know, I was like, I getting all fucking Jamaican in my head. I saw fucking nothing but red, yellow, red, green, and yellow, and everything like, or red, green, and yellow. Uh, fuck, I can't even say it. Black, green, and gold. You know, like I saw all that shit. You know, I was just see, I was, <laughs> I was like, ah, yes, Jamaican massive. Boop, 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 boop. <sighs> I'm a horrible Jamaican. I have no fucking accent whatsoever, but it is what it is. Claim it nonetheless. That is the culture or the home culture that I had. Um. But, you know, you hear her where she's just, like, pretty much letting this dude have it because he makes no fucking sense. And he was really out, he's really out here dick policing all these fucking dudes out here that want to do what they want to do with their fucking genitalia. And it's just like, bro, are you serious? If they want to go and do it, go ahead and do it. Like, not even on some, like, hey, more women for us. Just on some, like, yo, that's what you want to do? Great. And I really had to say, like, a lot of these fucking dudes that do this shit are fucking losers, dude. A lot of these fucking dudes are fucking losers. Really, really and truly. A lot of these dudes are fucking losers. I didn't really talk about simps too much or anything else like that. I do have my ways or my, my talking points where I really do sound like I'm bitter and everything else. And I understand that. But, you know, when I hear some of these dudes talk, I'm like, bro. You like, and then you, okay. You hear some of these people talk, right? One, everybody has, you know, the right to speak, freedom of speech, so on and so forth. You also have the right not to listen to the bullshit, however you feel about it, right, but what kills me is that you talk to some of these people, and then you ask them what they do in their life, what they're making, what they're doing, how they're living, so on and so forth, not to really qualify them, but to really, um, sorry, not to really um, say, hey, listen, you actually, um, you have room to talk here, I guess I'm trying to say in that you have room to talk here, but more or less, should I listen to this motherfucker? Because if this person's not doing what I expect that I want to do in, my, in their life, you know, like everybody has their like ups and downs and shit like that. But if this motherfucker is living worse than me, no, this motherfucker's a loser, dude. Like I just, I just can't, I can't, I can't see it unless you're like helping me and revealing something that I couldn't think of or some other way of thinking, right? Like, or refining my argument. Like, even when I talked to BGS, right, um, years ago when I first started, there's a lot of shit, BGS, like, all right, cool, sit in the chair, I was like, fuck, <laughs> you know, and I got in the chair, and like, a couple times where it's just like, oh, Mike, uh, oh, oh, I just fucking hung myself, and then a lot of times, and then a couple other times, well, not a lot of times, but a couple other times where people, like, saw my point, I was able to um, say it, and they have, like, you know, it makes sense to them, and they'd be like, oh, I see why you th think that way, I think it's wrong, but I see your point. 
right? Like and we can come to a conclu- or we can come to a compromise and say, all right, I can see your point. And then it also made me better because then it made me think like, you know, oh, okay, I can see this person's point and maybe I am wrong or I need to change the way I'm thinking if I want to actually put myself in the uh, quote unquote right position or the position that I actually want to achieve or the, um, uh, yeah, uh, the vision that I want to achieve, so on and so forth. So, you know, you hear some of these people and it's like, you look at them and look at what they're doing and it's just like, bro, uh, no offense, you've never made as much as me. You've never made the moves that I've made. You've never even failed to the extent that I failed. Um, and I, I can't take a lot of the stuff that you're saying, um, especially when you're coming at me disrespectfully calling me, uh, or not me, but calling um, the other brothers or even you know a, a, a space that I'm a part of boys or hurt men and all this other shit and like discrediting our discrediting our argument just because you don't agree and it's just like yo listen we don't agree with fucking simps but we also agree that hey simps have the right to do what they fucking want we just believe it's not going to turn out the way you want it brother (laughs) it's just it's just not (laughs) so like that's how we really feel and this is how we look at things but you see some people man where they just fucking lose it and they just can't say it they can't think they can't um look at it any other way Anyways, I'll end the video with that. Um, that's a little bit of the fire. That's a, that's some heat. It's not the whole. It's not the full flame that I had because I was fucking losing it. But you have to understand. You have to vet the source and the people that you're talking to or listening to, and really you have to say, hey, listen, man, what about your life makes you so um, matter of fact or somebody that I should even fucking listen to? Like, do you have a certain skill or do you have a certain proficiency? Um, in this matter or are you an SME or SME or a subject matter expert expert of this what experiences do you have and then also talk to me nice how are you fucking approaching me about this shit like recently um, last thing um, I canceled the order for my the new Mercedes s580 just because a lady in finance and my, my friend later later explained to me he's like what the way where she was coming from and I said okay I understand that and he's like but I totally would fucking cancel the order. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. He's like, because at some point in time, you really just can't let people just disrespect you. And then when they disrespect you, don't go, don't let them come back and disrespect you fucking twice. You're not going to fucking talk to me like that. All right, cool. I'm fucking spending $150,000 for this fucking car. And you know, you're going to ask me, is this the first car? Have you ever bought a car before? Like what the fuck? It's a very small thing. And I agree, but I'm like, who the fuck is buying an S580 for their first fucking car? Who's buying a six-figure car for their first fucking car? All I'm asking for is pre-qualification, and you're coming at me. Have you ever bought a car before? Bitch, are you stupid? Like, why would that even come out of your fucking mouth? Even if it's the person's first fucking car, boom, let's just say it is. Hey, maybe they can fucking afford it. Maybe they ran the fucking numbers. And the reason why I asked for the pre-qualification is because... If I was going to use Mercedes-Benz Finance, uh, hey, do you have pre-qualification steps? How much money do I need to bring to the table? I wanted to make sure that the deal goes through on the day that the car is delivered. I don't want any bullshit. I don't want no back and forth. I don't want to even wait another six months for another car to come in and all types of other shit. I don't want to do none of that. I want the vehicle that I fucking ordered and I want to make sure that I get it, right? So that's why I act for pre-qualification. Um, but my homeboy was like, yo, yeah, listen, man, they see people all the time, people are coming with cash. So if you come in and you say, hey, listen, you know, I need pre-approval, that makes it seem like, hey, you know, you can't even fucking afford the car if you have to ask for pre-approval, right? And like, that was the thing and that's what my friend explained to me and I was like, oh, okay, that makes total sense. And that's kind of what I thought, but at the same time, I've been in banks and they say, hey, listen, you know, you can get pre-approval or this is, you know, it's good to get pre-approval and stuff like that. So I, that's what, that was my mindset. And, but when she said that, I was like, no, <laughs> I, I, I could be totally wrong, but that's not how you talk to me. That's not how you treat a customer. That's especially not how you treat a customer that's getting a fucking S class. Like shit, like even, especially if it's like, yo, if I'm getting like a AMG, oh no, <laughs> you better lick my balls. Like, like, yo, don't talk to me. Like, yo. Yeah, change change up your fucking tone, your speech, everything. Don't ask no fucking stupid ass questions like that ever again in your life. Like I'm planning ahead, and I was like, yo, the car's like three, four months out, and I'm like, hey, just making sure. But my friend explained it to me, but he was like, man, fucking, don't let nobody disrespect you twice. Don't give them a fucking chance to disrespect you twice. Plain and simple. So even if I fucking go to another Mercedes Benz uh, dealership and I say, hey, listen, um, I want this this vehicle, and they get the same exact vehicle that I ordered from this other one. 
I don't give a fuck. You know, it's petty, it's childish, it's immature, whatever the fuck, but they're not going to talk to me like shit like that ever again. And, um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, did I teach them a lesson? Maybe, most likely not. It is what it is. But, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to give you a chance to try me again. Fuck that. Suck a dick. All right. With that being said, <laughs> with that being said, suck a dick. <laughs> with that being said, love you all. Appreciate you all. Wish you all the best in the rest of your days. And um, know when to hang up the hat. Don't let people disrespect you twice. Don't give them a fucking chance. And, you know, put yourself in the right position so you can actually progress and help others do the same. Peace.